Thank you for joining us today. My name is Mark Bluefield and in this video we will show you a technique that we use as professional photographers to sharpen our images. By the end of the video you'll have learned how to use the Unsharp Mask Filter in Photoshop CS5 and how to sharpen your images and how the various settings affect the amount of sharpening and what you need to do to create sharp prints and images for the web. Um, I'll explain a little bit about the background of Unsharp Masking and why you actually need it. The reason for the needing to sharpen your images is that all digital cameras made today have a anti-aliasing filter that's placed in front of the sensor. This filter is there to stop more fringing and other artifacts appearing on the photographs. The only problem with this filter is, is that the anti-aliasing filter produces soft images. And it's this softness that you need to sharpen if you're going to send your images to a printer or to the web, for instance. Now, the way there are lots of different ways that you can sharpen a, a photograph. And the way we're going to show you today is the Unsharp Masking, which is the one we use. And Unsharp Masking has its origins back in the days of the negative and silver-based photography. And it's a technique that uses uh, the difference between two areas and by increasing the contrast between those two areas it makes the image appear sharper. It doesn't actually sharpen the image and therefore if your image is originally out of focus or blurred it's not going to help you get a sharp image but what it will do is it can it will correct the anti-aliasing filter effects and it'll make your image look better when you send it to a printer for instance. Now as I said it, it, it increases the contrast between the two areas. So what we'll do now is we'll go in and I'll show you how to apply the filter and the different things you can do uh, when you've got your, the filter there and the different settings. So let's change this to a picture that needs sharpening. And uh, This is a picture of a female leopard uh, taken in the Maasai Mara and it's going to be used to uh, make a print. So we're going to send this off to an Epson printer and therefore we need to do some sharpening to it. Now the thing is that you should put, do your sharpening as the last possible thing. It literally is that once you've done the sharpening it needs to go to the printer or it needs to be converted or whatever your the final action is going to be. The reason for this is that if you do the sharpening at the beginning of the process then the artifacts or the, the little errors that occur when you do the sharpening can be magnified by the things you do such as resizing and uh, um, applying uh, curves and levels for instance. So it needs to be the very last thing you do. So we've done all the uh, respotting. we've taken out any dust spots that were on the sensor, we've put in the curves and we've made adjustments using levels to get the, the uh, colour and the saturation up to what we need for our printer. And now we're going to do the sharpening. So what I need to do is I need to get to back to one single layer with everything there. So I'm going to flatten the image by going to layer, flatten image. And that will now bring this down so that we've got one background layer with all the adjustments made. Now I need to duplicate this layer and there's two ways I can do this. I can either drag and drop onto the duplicate icon at the back on the bottom of the layers palette or I can current press Control J and chain and make a copy of the, of the background as a new layer. I'm going to rename this so that I know what it's for. I'm going to call it Unsharp because that's the convention that we use. Oh, can't spell sharp. And therefore, when this file is reopened, anybody would know that it's that's the sharpening layer. The next thing we need to do is to convert this to a smart object. And if you right click and go convert to smart object, and on the menu and it's now converted to a smart object and you can tell that by the fact the icon changes on the layer uh, with this uh, black and white box and that tells you that the layer is now a smart object. 
And when we apply the filter to a smart object, we get what we call smart filters. And they allow you to go into them and make changes to them. If you were to do, if you were to apply the Unsharp mask just purely to the background layer, then if you wanted to make any changes to it later, for instance, you would have to go back and undo the changes that you've made and take the filter off and then reapply the filter. So by using the smart filter, it allows you to go in and make changes and change your mind, which is always useful. Right, so we're now going to do the actual sharpening. Before we start, I'm going to zoom in to the cat to about 50% so that I can actually see the whole, oh, I can see the bit that I'm interested in, which is, is the muzzle of the leopard and the eyes. And we're going to apply the filter. So we go filter, sharpen, unsharp mask. Click on that and up comes the unsharp mask dialog box. I just move it to one side. You can see in the dialog that we've got 100% a preview at the top. We've got the three sliders, amount radius and threshold at the bottom, and the OK and cancel buttons, and we've also got uh, the preview on and off. We always leave the preview on. Now, at the moment, uh, this is um, looking at the, the leopard's nose, and what we like to do is to use the eyes to actually look at when we're doing sharpening, especially if you're doing portraits, be they of animal or people. If you get the eyes sharp, then the, that's where most people will focus on and look at the image. So it's always a good idea to, to make sure the eyes are nice and sharp. Now to move the dialog box, we can either use the hand and do that, or the other technique is if you move across or off the dialog box, you'll see a little square appear. If you now click wherever the square is, it will zoom the dialog box to it. So I can look at the ears, I can look at the whiskers, uh, I can look at the chin, and we'll go back to the eye. Now if you want to make any little adjustments, we can just wind that around, and we're going to look like that. Now, let's get on and have a chat about the sliders. Now, the amount slider seems uh, is the done in percentages, and if you push this to 1, you get the least amount of sharpening. If you push it to 500, you get the maximum amount of sharpening. The 500% is a bit too much, and you can always tell if things are over sharpened when you can see little tiny white halos around the details. So if you look at these white, the black spots in the eye, you can see there's a little tiny bit of white over each, around them, and that's what we call a halo. And that normally indicates there's just too much sharpening. And I think you'll agree that there's too much sharpening on this image at 500. Now, what I will do is, while we've got it turned up to 500, is you can turn the preview on and off. It doesn't affect the dialog boxes uh, magnified images, but what it does do, it will affect the main images. So you can see what your sharpen is doing and you can switch this on and off to get a good idea of the effect you, you're doing. Now the amount slider, as I say, is fairly self-explanatory and you can put in almost anything you like. We normally stick to somewhere about 150% percent, between 50 and 150 percent. There are some um, techniques that say you should use 200 and then turn the radius down. I'll explain the radius in a second. We like to use the radius at about one pixel and therefore we tend to stick to a slightly lower amount of um, percentage of the amount uh, the sharpening. 200 and, and a radius of 1 is too much, I think, for this image. You can see here that the, the, the starting to halo around. But if you turn the radius down to 0.4 or 0.5 or 0.1, you can see that the, it will soften the image and there's less sharpening being applied. Now, the reason 
for that is is the radius is how much of the edge is affected so if you've got two edges that are butted together the radius literally is a bit like a magnifying glass the bigger the radius the bigger the magnifying glass the more of the edge is used the smaller the magnifying glass or the smaller the pixels the radius you then are looking at a much finer line so by turning this down to point to point one of a pixel you're hardly looking at any you haven't got any detail at all and the sharpening isn't applied if you push this right up um, to uh, let's make a sensible to about 10 pixels you can see that the image becomes unusable and again you've got these white halos occurring what we would normally do is to use a radius of about one um, it's very rare that we'll go above one and what we would tend to do is to use a radius of one if I can get it there there we go oh, not quite and an amount of about 150 percent and again we'll put that 150 percent now the threshold is the last of the adjustments that you can make and the threshold is um, adjusts the levels and it operates in the opposite direction from the other two sliders so if you've got a threshold of zero you get the maximum amount of sharpening if you push the threshold to 255 you get the least amount of sharpening and essentially the threshold is another word of saying levels and if you can see here it actually says levels by the side of it and what it does is that it, it means the number of different tones that are being affected so this is looking at only very narrow uh, tone margins and therefore you get more sharpening now on this image what we I'm going to do is I'm going to probably move this threshold to around two or three just have a quick look that's about it that's three and I think that's quite a nice sh sharpening for this image. You can see that the, the nose of the leopard is, is all sharp, the fur is. If you want to look at something in more detail, you can always click on and move the preview around. And you can actually increase the zoom in the proof in the dialog uh, beyond what you can norm what you is useful. But you can always zoom in and out if you need to. And having a look, that looks quite a nice level of sharpening so I'm going to click OK at that I think that's probably the best we can do for that and you'll now see that the layer has changed and we've now got this smart filter and the unsharp mask and as I was saying earlier this is the feature that allows you to now if you think oh well maybe it's a bit over sharpened you can double click on that again and it brings the dialog box back up and it's where you left it and now what you can do is you could turn this down to 130 for instance and click OK and that adjustment is made and this is the advantage of using the smart filters is that you can go backwards and forwards and make adjustments now the one last thing to do now we've got the smart filter is to right click on the unsharp mask and you get the edit smart filter blending options if you click on there the dialog box comes up I'll just move that up because I know what's going to happen next and you need to change this uh, blending mode from normal to luminosity and click OK and what we've now done is we're now affecting only the black and white image and we're just sharpening that particular that portion of the image so by sharpening only that we tend to have less effect on the color and we put less color artifacts into the image and that tends to help when you're putting it to printers you're not getting you won't get uh, so many problems with uh, plain backgrounds or plain color where you get artifacts in and that's it that's the image sharpened uh, go back and look at it at full size it's now only needs to be uh, sent to the printer and it's done what you will notice when it comes out of the printer is though that you've got a lot better picture it's a lot sharper looks nicer now we've given you some settings there with um, 
the amount and the radius and the threshold and they work well for us and they work well on our printers what you'll need to do though is go and experiment because each camera is slightly different even the models in the same range can have different need sharpening needs and um, certain printers do better than others with sharpening so go go out and experiment with what you need to use to, to get your images as sharp as possible well that's the end of this video i hope it's been helped to you and i hope you'll join us again soon thank you for watching